Hello guys, welcome back to the more Sport Videos YouTube channel and today we're going to be driving F1 2023 My Team Career Mode. We're going to be doing a Mana Racing RTG. So that means that we're going to be bringing Mana Racing from the back of the grid to the very top. Here's a quick history lesson about Mana Racing. Mana Racing weren't always called that name. In 2010, a new team joined the grid called Virgin Racing. And in 2011, that name would be taken over and kind of mixed together to called Marigia Virgin Racing. In 2012, that team called Marigia completely took over the brand and now it became Marigia Racing. That was until 2014, where Mana Racing took over the Marigia Formula 1 team. And up until 2016, like Nico Rosberg, they left the grid completely for good. But now, let's get into the car. As you can see in the background, we are designing our livery for the car. As you know, Man of Racing raced in orange, blue and a small bit of white. So we're going to try and make um, a livery to match that. Uh, we've also selected Jack Dewan as her driver. Um, simply because he was in the Alpine Academy and I was too afraid that he might switch to um, McLaren quickly so we just yoinked him really quick and now we have our team together I honestly think that this could be a good lineup but we'll have to wait and see until round one in Bahrain Speaking of Bahrain, just finishing up a couple of things on the aerodynamics and chassis departments of the racing team um, hopefully these will be ready for Australia, which is the next round. Um, this will be very good because Australia has one huge straight, so this should be a good upgrade. So now our first ever lap in the Manor Racing Team car. Going down to the third one, we have 329 km per hour in the speed trap. And going up the hill into turn four on the rise now, eight gear, flat out, looking for the 100 meter board on the left there, hitting the apex just, not dragging the car out too much as we get a snap of oversteer. But now holding fifth gear through this corner, I take too much curb on the inside compromises my exit and i run over the curb for a long time then compromises my turn nine that's a bit of annoyance but we'll go down to turn 10 now and going down the hill trickiest break is on the whole track i think we did it all right again on the power drs wide open It's been a nice lap so far, so coming down to the final corner on the racetrack, breaking where you see the black board on the left hand side, getting onto fourth gear, power now, you're able to do that on the new F1 game with this amazing grip. Going 
down to the very last corner of the racetrack. Using the same thing that we did in practice, take the black box on the left hand side, full gear power, to the line, DRS wide open, that's our lap. So bad if you ask me. Here's the full standings after all time. Jack doing actually impressive in 20th, 20, not last, so in our manner racing car, that's very As we very return good. to racing for the opening event Here of what promises to be an enthralling season. Welcome along then to round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. We go racing today around the 3.36 miles of the magnificent Bahrain International Circuit with 15 corners and two good passing opportunities into turns one and four. Keep an eye out for drivers locking the front left tyre into the tricky braking zone of turn 10. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Perez, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Ocon, Gasly, Stroll, the owner driver, Sonoda, Oscar Piastri, Albon, Sainz, Joe, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Magnussen, Dewan, Sargent, Dewan. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? A new season, then a clean slate where anything could happen. And. Right is good, gearbox is responding normally. Make sure to warm up the tyres and brakes. Warm the tyres and brakes throughout the lap, please. Starting with soft compound tyre, we'd be looking to switch them about lap 9 roughly, lap 10. So hopefully everything goes according to plan. Um, no safety cars because I didn't underfuel the car, which would put me at a disadvantage if we did get a safety car. We have to see how this race plays out. We get 0.4 meters on the start, which is very good. Possibly the first time I've done that in F123. Almost time for the lights to go out now. We wait now. Rev it up. 8,000 RPM. Five red lights. And it's lights out, and away we go. We get a good start. We jump Lance Stroll. We get past the Alpine of Esteban Ocon as well. George Russell has a, a very bad start, going down to turn one. We're on the outside line now, looking to attack the McLaren of Lando Norris. We can't do so, but we're up into P7. We are behind Alonso now, but we're also defending from the Alpine of Esteban Ocon. Ocon looks at the inside, looks at the outside, we cover him off. Taking it nice and easy on this opening lap now, going down to turn nine, taking too much curb, we run wide a small bit. Luckily that gives us a good drive up the hill for turn ten. Tricky breaking zone on the track, take it easy for the first lap. But we go wide, very wide. And that curb is really annoying when you do go wide. We get on the power in frustration and we get a load of wheel spin. I wouldn't be surprised if Akon will be catching us by the end of this lap. We're falling away from Alonso already. The power of that Aston Martin is too good for our Manor racing car. Going down the back straight, using some of the ERS, trying to defend and defend from Akon. But let's have a look at this restart again. Hamilton got a better start than Verstappen and took the lead into turn one. Leclerc also attacked Verstappen. Perez actually overtook them both. Here's our on, on board. As you can see, we gained five positions in one corner. Absolutely monumental stuff. 
Hamilton runaway leader at the start from Checo Perez, Charles Leclerc, Max Verstappen, Lando Norris, Fernando Alonso and Tony Griffin. Pierre Gasly behind, Esteban Ocon, all the two Alpine are actually scrapping on their own so that's probably why they didn't catch me when I went wide at turn 10. George Russell with a horrific start down in P10. Let's just skip forward two more laps now. We see that George Russell has made his way back through the two Alpines and has also got us now. Keep on him, you might make a mistake. But we have the ERS and we are going to attack George Russell with our Mercedes power unit going down to turn one. Mercedes versus Mercedes power going down to turn one. We have the inside line, second gear, first gear, getting the power easily now. Defend from Russell up the hill. We have the position back. Russell will have the better drive now and he is going to try the outside and he gets through this time. Unfortunately for us, he does get through. We're going to have to let that one go as we are not a Mercedes driver. Going down to the very last corner of lap four, Pierre Gasly gets us. Now, what is he doing? He parks the car on the apex and that ruins our race now. We have orange front wing damage. What was Pierre Gasly doing? What was he doing? Ah, oh, now at the end of lap five, defending and defending from everyone, but we are getting overtaken left, right, and centre. We go wide at one of the critical parts of the racetrack, and Gasly gets past. We have a horrific line, and now Ockham is also going to try, but luckily we can defend that. And Ockham has to back out. He'll be getting us anyway at the pit stop, but it's so annoying that we're going to have to bring these hard compound tyres now to the end that we're going to go on to this lap. So let's have a look at this pit stop here. Ocon actually using the slipstream uh, off the back of our car. Sort of what like uh, Fernando Alonso did in 2012 in Croatia, um, where he bumped, basically bumped drafts of the car all the way to the pit and then uh, swerved out. So into the pits now. It was a quick pit stop for the tyres, but obviously with the front wing time loss, it's going to be another five seconds roughly. Right, let's go, come on! Perfect job on the turn in there, mate. Looks like a nice stop now, time. We're happy with that one. adventure starts. That was our last P22. stop. P22. No more schedule pit stops. Let's go. Debris up next on soft compound tyres. But now on lap nine, the scheduled pit stop for the soft compound tyre runners, they're all in. Get past Magnussen, Bottas, De Vries, Ocon, Sonoda. Up next is Norris. But now we also have to defend from Ocon again, who is on those brand new medium tyres. Jack Dewan is in now. Hopefully another good stop for our team. We're going to try and get Ocon here. We have the DRS, we have the ERS. Going down to turn one, look to the inside, we actually touch with Esteban Ocon, in real life that would have sent our car flying. Luckily we actually get away with no front wing damage at all. Now going up the hill, we also have DRS again. We look to the inside line, going down to turn four, we hardly touch. I think we do eventually touch, but there's no damage caused to either car, so it's clean, hard racing. And we eventually get past Esteban Ocon. Here's Lewis Hamilton on lap 13 now. He's P4, he's dropped back a considerable amount through the pit stop phase. Behind him is Fernando Alonso and George Russell. But now going down the hill, look at this, the Mercedes power goals. He's slowing to a halt now. Pulls off to the side, and that's the end of his race. He was leading for such a long time. Drops down to P4, and now drops out of this race. Just one lap later, here's George Russell now. Turn nine, going up the hill. 
No power. He's lost power. Completely lost power, and this is a worrying sight for Mercedes power unit. We have one in the back of our manor car, and this is a worrying sight with six laps to go in this race. George Russell pulls off safely to the side of the track, right next to a Marshall post. So that doesn't mean we have any safety cars. Same situation with Lewis's retirement, no safety car, so we can continue on with the race. Here's the next lap again with Max Verstappen. Riding on board with the Red Bull driver, clean out in front. He's had such a good drive today. But what's this? Just power going in the, in the Red Bull now as well. He gets passed by Carlos Sainz and Checo Perez. This is a fatal blow to the Red Bull. We've had three of the top drivers go out of this race now. We've had George Russell, Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen. But by the looks of things, Max Verstappen's going to be able to carry it back to the pits. I don't know what that's going to do. But they're not going to change anything during this stop either. So I don't know what this was. But they apparently got his car repaired and sent back out. So he's going to fight back on the medium, on the soft compound tyre, sorry. As you can see, Carlos Sainz making a move on Lando Norris. Verstappen coming out just behind Alex Albon. And we are having a look down the around the outside of Yuki Sonoda going down to turn one. We touch slightly. But no damage for either car. Going up the hill now, we force Yuki onto the um, onto the curb now. But I think that wasn't really that legal. Sorry. Alex Albon three-way fight with uh, Nico Hulkenberg um, and Yuki Sonoda as well now. Alex Albon, a backseat passenger, and waiting to pounce now and these two fighting up ahead. Going down to turn 10. If someone doesn't back out at turn 10, they're gonna both crash, and they don't back out, and they both go off the circuit, allowing Alex Albon, number 23, to get past. As he famously said, try and get past, I'll get you on the grass. But now, going around the outside, up the hill, Alex Albon's gonna try and Yuki to know to try and try again, but he gets the drive, and now he has the inside line for the next corner, and that's an easy move for Alex Albon. Here's Max Verstappen regaining places. Not going to be enough as we switch to his Red Bull teammate Checo Perez on the final lap of this Grand Prix. He's caught brilliantly today, waited for Verstappen to have his fault. Same with Lewis Hamilton, he's pounced at the right time. So going down to the final corner, Checo Perez is going to be a race winner in Bahrain for the second time. He done it in 2020. He's done it in 2023. Checo Perez is your round one winner from Charles Leclerc and Fernando Alonso. Just behind the podium spots is Carlos Sainz, Lando Norris, Pierre Gasly, Max Verstappen. Wait, no, Max Verstappen has passed Pierre Gasly for P6. Lance Stroll P8 now, La Esteban Ocon P9 and we wait to see our manor car come home in P10. Such a big feat for our team. On our very first outing we get P10. After getting orange front wing damage in lap 5 we coped these hard t compound tyres to the very end. Now going through the very final corner our manor car is going to get a singular point in the first race here in Bahrain. Such a good treat for so many people. Carlos Sainz is your driver of the day. And now we go to the podium where we see Charles Leclerc. Tell me, Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. 
Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently and it's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be so proud of the victory they secured here.